Are the majority of immigrants who come to the United States here by choice or by necessity? Are the people you see here simply criminals who have come to damage, or are they instead human beings who are just trying to survive? Is America the pure and endless place of prosperity, which it also claims to be, or is it a place that chains its people to the lower caste of society? We're opposed to illegal immigration because what we are seeing now on our southern border is not what it was even 10 years ago. Men wandering across a line looking for work. What we're seeing now is not immigration. It's an armed invasion. A lot of people say, you know, immigrants came to this country, they bring drugs to this country. Uh, in other words, like so many criminals come to this country. They bring not only honest and desperate people looking for work, but also mountains of illegal drugs and murderers and rapists and professional criminals of every stripe. This is not true, you know, it's just, it's maybe 5% about criminals, the real criminals came to this country, but you know, the rest of us is regular people. People like Mario Rodriguez, he wakes up at 5 a.m. seven days a week and walks two miles to this spot on the side of a road. Here, he and 30 to 40 other Latino men stand around waiting and hoping to get picked up for a day of work. I'm a working hard black man. Life is a struggle. That's you, know what I, you know what I think? I think they're taking our jobs because we ain't got no job. So you leave me alone. You know what, what the heck I've been. They discriminate against us. I don't know why. We don't do anything. Why do they discriminate against us? We're humans, the same as them. We have the same flesh, so I don't know. The reason why you have illegal immigration in the United States is because there's a need for the services that these people are providing. The average American high school student doesn't want to be a cook, okay? And if they do want to be a cook, they want to go to culinary institute, so when they graduate, they'll be get top salary. Most restaurants can't afford to pay a top salary, so as a result, they hire illegal aliens. Where the highest paid jobs are, it's, it's very segregated. So front of the house, particularly the servers and the bartenders, you can make some decent money in casual dining. The back of the house, the, the kitchen, the, the dishwashers, the cooks, still tend to be very low wages. And back of the house, I'll just tell you, it's the same demographics as this. It's, it's immigrant men of color. I feel horrible because I cannot go back to Ecuador uh, because I had to work, I had to do you know, the best thing for me and for my family and and then uh, later on you know you kind of get used to but uh you miss so much because people you you know they're dying some you're not going to see them ever so why why do so many people head north looking for work well paul as i think it's pretty well known now the uh the economies of uh, some of our main trading partners, such as Mexico, have not fared as well as people had hoped under uh, trade agreements like the North American Free Trade Agreement, now 16 years um, in operation. The promise of NAFTA was that Mexico would be able to export goods and not people. That was the explicit promise at the time of NAFTA, and it just hasn't been true. The agricultural sector has just been decimated. NAFTA liberalized trade which allowed uh, U.S. goods, mainly meats and grains, to flow um, without tariff, inter tariff uh, protection into Mexico and compete directly with uh, pr uh, producers who are producing things like corn, not just for the big global marketplace, but for their own consumption. So, um, which reminds me, you, you know when people go, you, you hear like the, the narratives, oh, you don't like your job, you should go find another one that's better, or, you know, go, go find a higher paying job, or did you know anyone who might be unemployed at the moment, a family member or a parent? And, you know, they, they probably are working hard to try to find a job. Yet, if you go in the media, if you go in the media, a lot of them are saying you know, these lazy people don't know how to find jobs. These are where the jobs are these days. Retail and restaurant. Two industries that are very low-wage industries um, that don't have benefits, that don't have health care. So, yeah, go ahead. So, 90% uh, of restaurant workers um, have no paid time off uh, if you're sick and or, or health insurance. So 65 percent of the restaurant industry are foreign born and we estimate that about 40 percent total not of the 65 are undocumented. People in the restaurant industry are twice as likely to be on public assistance than the rest of the workforce. And food stamps is the ridiculous part. 
because you're working in a restaurant and you don't make enough money to feed yourself. And just to add like another thing on this, if you take the food chain, which includes restaurant workers, farm workers, meat, meat packers, you know, poultry, uh, slaughter places, or anything that has to do with food, that's 20 million people, and it's the largest uh, sector in, in the, the, the U.S. economy, heavily immigrant uh, workforce. Um, the, um, they're also twice the amount of public assistance. Fox News alert, alarming new details about the financial toll of illegal immigration on the local level. The Los Angeles County Supervisor finding that county taxpayers shelled out $600 million last year on welfare, welfare services and benefits for the children of illegal immigrants. This is mounting. The things are completely out of hand. In Harris County, the Houston area, one study says immigration, both legal and illegal, cost the taxpayers there nearly $600 million. Harrison, we in Georgia are experiencing significant social and economic consequences but because our taxpayers are subsidizing half a million illegal aliens here in our, here in our state. And, and all we want to see is our nation's immigration laws enforced. Nothing more, nothing less. If you want to live in America, contribute to America. And if you don't want to contribute to America, you don't deserve to be here. And too many people have come to the and that's why there's such this big immigration debate, because there are too many people that come to the United States, work for cash, so not only they're guilty of breaking the laws, but so are the employers, okay? No one's paying taxes, and, and what happens? So they're here living off the system. They can do both. You can, you can work off the books, you can get paid in cash, or a lot of people, what they do is get false social security numbers and they work under those and you you hear a lot of people you know saying oh they're criminals because they they they're committing fraud technically it's fraud but they're paying into a social security system that they'll never see a dime back of because it's not their real real name they need to legalize people so that people couldn't could pay taxes the problem the, the craziness is people want to come to the United States, they work. Congress knows that they're here. They know that they're providing skills, but yet they won't issue them a Social Security number. So if you don't issue them a Social Security number, then how are they supposed to work legally? They can't. So Congress actually is encouraging people to work illegally in the United States. Why create circumstances that encourage immigrants to come work here, but then make it difficult for them to have proper documentation? And looking back at the history of U.S. immigration, we learned that policies are often dictated by economics. U.S. immigration policies have depended on need for low-wage workers, opening up the borders when economically beneficial, and closing up borders when politically convenient. During World War II, the Bracero program brought 4.5 billion Mexican workers in the U.S. without proper documentation. Yet, in 1954, Eisenhower initiated... Are you familiar with Operation, quote, wetback? It was, quite frankly, politically incorrect. Eisenhower had a million people a year. A million people a year were coming in. He sent a general down to the border and said, stop it. Go after the people that are hiring them and start sending them back. Let's say the average strawberry picker is being paid $8 an hour, for argument's sake. And, and immigration comes in and says, no, you have to pay it. And the Depart U.S. Department of Labor that investigates them and monitors it says you have to pay the prevailing wage. So if the prevailing wage is, say, $12 an hour, they, they, they must pay that higher wage. And because the U.S. Department of Labor will go to these farms and spot check different farmers checking all their payroll records, seeing if they got paid the prevailing wage, seeing if they got paid overtime rates, seeing if they have medical insurance, all kinds of obligations, okay? They check to see what kind of housing is provided to the farm worker. So to avoid all of that, you just don't do it, okay? And the United States Congress is well aware of it and unfortunately just closes their eyes to it and allows these farms to operate for years and years and years. That's why you don't hear about immigration making raids on factory farms in California, because it's an unheard of thing. They just don't do it.
because they know if they did it, the crops are going to rot in the field. And the political repercussions of that will be tremendous. Every restaurant in Washington, you'll find illegal, uh, illegal aliens where the senators and congressmen have dinner every day and every night, lunch and dinner. So they're aware of the problem. But one of the reasons why they don't stop the problem is one is because they know they're providing a need, which is needed in the United States. And what immigrants do is they make money and send it to their families. So by sending the money to their families, we're helping the economies of these foreign governments, which then requires the United States government to give less subsidies to these governments because they're basically on their own because they have all these American dollars coming there, which is a whole, another economy for them. It's crazy. But that's the way it works. So they're encouraging them, but they want it to seem like they're not encouraging them at that's all. That's absolutely correct. So why are politicians talking out of both sides of their mouth? One reason, they likely know that our farms like those in North Carolina would be empty if we didn't have low-wage immigrants growing and picking our food. In a study of North Carolina Growers Association, who administers a guest worker program to staff the state's farms, between 1998 and 2012, when the yearly average of unemployed citizens in the state was 130,000. On average of those unemployed citizens, only 268 were willing to take jobs with the NCGA. That's only 4.1% of the workforce needed. Those citizens who did take one of the farm jobs, only 7 made it to the end of the growing season. Politicians know our farms must be fully staffed, and they also know food prices are at an all-time low. On the other side, they are well aware of political cost of not being tough on immigration. In a stunning upset, the number two Republican in the House of Representatives and seven-term Virginia congressman who has publicly supported the DREAM Act and small immigration reforms lost in Tuesday's primary to an underfunded Tea Party challenger, Dave Bratt. Experts say Bratt won in part by slamming Cantor for supporting immigration reform and amnesty for undocumented immigrants. Political analysts like CNN's David Gergen say Cantor's defeat effectively kills any hopes that the House will pass an immigration reform bill. So while politicians leave our undocumented workers in legal limbo for our own economic gain, our leaders don't have any problems passing laws that make life even harder for all immigrants and cause them to live in fear. This program is called Secure Communities. It wasn't implemented before I got here. What it does is that when you get arrested, or when anyone gets arrested in, in New York City, right, you go to the precincts and they take your fingerprint, right, of everyone, citizen, non-citizen, immigrant, non-immigrant. They take our fingerprints and they run it through a system, and they run it through an immigration system. And if immigration says, we think that we can deport this person, they put a hold on you. It takes about four hours for immigration to make a decision on whether to try to deport you or to try to lock you up because you're a non-citizen. How does this affect over-policing? If you're going to target people based on who they are, in this case mexican American, but if there was anybody, that is racial profiling on its face. To say that we're going to stop the incoming of people that are Mexican, Amer uh, Mexicans into America is to say that you're going to pe look for people that look Mexican, which is racial profiling for a lot of very legal citizens of Hispanic descent. That's the problem with it. The relationship between immigrants and the government of the United States of America is like that of a tantalizing spider who draws flies into its web and then feeds upon their struggling bodies through unfair economic partnerships that allow only the U.S. to benefit. We draw immigrants into the web from other countries, especially Latin American countries. We take advantage of the fact that people are suffering abroad from our exploitative trade agreements. We take advantage of the fact they lack opportunities. We take no political responsibility for the large displaced population of undocumented immigrants in the U.S. 
Instead, we marginalize them and treat them like criminals, denying citizenship at every turn. We do not see ourselves as members of a global community or as citizens of a world.